agency need to step forward. It's not a problem of the, a, a higher education alone. It's a youth, uh, look, it's a problem as 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 much as it is for them it is a problem for the department of women youth and persons with the, with disabilities together with the national youth development agency chairperson so we are calling for them to step forward and give us a report on the interventions that they have done working together with the necessary government departments in assisting young people uh, in higher education institutions thank you very much honorable chairperson tool tip i need my audio i'll plus a or you can simply tooltip. Mam Sonti. Thank you, Chapesin. Good morning, all. Um, Chapesin, this is Ongena Kul. Kulam Tembi Bokulumanga, or Malunga, and this thing that you are talking about. Uh, it's very, very, very sad. Very painful. And I am blame, blaming a government, more especially the Department of um, Police. Chaperson, how many times our young people are dying or the students are prosecuted by the government, by the police? And we know, uh, in all of us, the poverty is high. And then, Guna Makaya, Chapesin, Nanga Tatin, doing. And the Abandana, they took Fanele, the Our children are supposed to be educated. So, if free education, Chapesin, in Yanze Legile. So, and Kubulu, which I'm a police, Fanele, which I have another Abandana, they must hear our children oh, education. because they want education. So, we need to secure and safeguard our kids. As the Portfolio Committee on Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities, we must support them fully 100%. And our children, it's a must to do that. And this education, it must be free, Chaperson. Thank you so much. I am very sad. Lose a child again, just because of. And very, 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 very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mam Sonti. Um, maybe uh, 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 we need to coin up a, a resolution as the portfolio committee on what is it that you are going to say. Uh, to the Department of Higher Education and to the Department of Women. Um, Honorable, I'm a up strong. Honorable Lampiti. Good morning, Chair, and uh, very good morning to Honorable Members as well as uh, um, the team from CGE. Um, Chair, I would like to, to begin by echoing your remarks in regards to what happened um, at VITS last week where we saw violence um, being used against young people who really are fighting to have access to education. And I think unfortunately and painfully someone died and someone um died on the street who had gone to the doctor to, to seek help, to, to, to seek uh, help um, and was unfortunately shot and killed by, by, by um, the police. Um, and I think, Chair, we, we oh, really- That, that person was, was not amongst the students. Chair, I'm speaking in regards to Um Togo Zizindumbe, yeah. who was uh, at the time going to a doctor. And okay. as he left, the doctor was shot. That is who I'm referring to, Chair. Yeah, what I want to get from you, Um Togo Zizindumbe eh, 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 was not 
was he part of the students or he was no he was and... not he was not part of the students chair he he oh. was a bystander who had gone to the doctor and oh. on his oh. way out holding his doctor's letter was shot oh okay yes that, that okay. that's what i'm referring to chair that's the one that I was talking about. Uh, yes. that, uh, I don't know whether he, he was amongst the students or is a person who was just passing. Yes, he was a 35-year-old man who who happened mm -hmm. to be on the street at the time that the protest was was taking place. And so I just wanted to to echo your your sentiments on that point to say that we really extend on behalf of the committee our deepest mm -hmm. condolences to his family, to his wife and to his kids. Um, and I really believe, Chair, that really there must be some form of, of recommendation that we will make as a committee, as you have stated, not only to the Department of Higher Education, but also to the Department of Police. Um, we, we, we really need to, to understand where that case is going to go uh, um, and and I've I've heard this morning that four police officers have been arrested for that particular incident, uh, but we really need to follow up, Chair, because it, it's really painful uh, to see more citizens in this country being shot. Not so long ago, we had the death of Nathaniel Julius, who was shot again by uh, the police officer. So we we really need to understand where. And when is these things going to stop and going to end? But just to 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 say, Chair, about students, um, we 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 understand the pain that students are facing right now in terms of not being able to register. We understand the fact that NASFAS is fundamentally broken and is unable to meet the demands of students and is unable to support the dreams of young people in their attempt to receive qualifications and be able to provide for their families. And so we are reminded that we really need to be looking at reforms around NASFAS that actually make sense um, and are able and allowing for students to be able to do what they need to do, um, particularly when it comes to, to paying uh, their fees. Um, but also to be reminded that there's a missing middle that is, that is painfully uh, being affected by, by fees and we really need to look at a reform agenda somehow that will be able to address that bracket of young people that are sometimes missed um, by, 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 by uh, uh, the coverage. And so, Chair, I, I'd like to support what Honorable Masigo has said. Um, I believe that we must put together a recommendation that will allow us to, to, to find out how uh, the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities can work together with the Department of Higher Education in addressing the issues that young, young people, particularly students on campuses, are raising so that we can be able to find solutions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mpiti. Um, let's get uh, Honorable Piri. Uh, thanks, Chair. Allow me to switch off my video. I'm experiencing a lot of shading as we speak now, so I'm afraid it might cut or have a bad network. But at the same time, let me uh, forward my greetings to colleagues, uh, CGE, everybody on the platform. Uh, Chair, I I am tempted to also echo and concur with the. Uh, the uh, com uh, members who spoke earlier on the issue that you have just raised or commented on in terms of a uh, student uh, financial assistant. Uh, Chair, I, I, I would like to propose to the committee as much as we are the ones who, who are responsible for young people to say, how about we, we move a motion and debate in the house on how best can we have an implementable and sustainable viable financial 
uh, assistant to student because it might not be for now, but I'm foreseeing even in the near future, we still have gonna have many challenges when it comes to the opening of schools or tertiary institutions. Then we'll be assisted how to put it properly in the house to debate about the financial assistant, especially focusing on how do we sustain uh, this financial assistant to, to student to avoid uh, what we are seeing or what we've seen even previous years. Secondly, Chair, I'll also want to get as much as Fikile has raised Honorable Maseko to get to maybe we're supposed to today as a matter of the national question to dedicate the day and discuss about this matter thoroughly uh, with the uh, NYDA being part telling us or give up raising us with um, what are the measures that they've taken as much as since we've started to experience or we've started to see uh, the disappointment of student protest and because of the financial assistance that is not covering them. Maybe we need to be told even by the department as it advocate for young people, what measures did they do in communicating with the other departments that are responsible, Department of Higher Education and the Treasury in terms of the scheme. So I think we, we, we need to have a dedicated day where we get even a proper report from the NYDA, the department, and also uh, in particular, maybe from those who are sitting or who are uh, deployed to sit in the scheme itself. Because the, I, I believe the portfolio is the one that is responsible to question and get more answers and interrogate further into these issues because we are under those, uh, we are the ones who are responsible to play an oversight uh, on behalf of young people. Chair, on the issue of uh, police stations or on the issue of Department of SAPS, my question will be why should, it's one thing that we need to ask as we write our resolution, why should SAPS uh, allow their members to go with life ammunition uh, to protest, peaceful protest, where there's no war, but they need to make peace and make it a point that uh, there's no complications and their members comes with life ammunition. Maybe we need to start to question and ask them, why did they, do they allow their members to go with life ammunition? Immediately when you release or you, you give members life ammunition to go to a gathering or protest, then you, you are provoking them because they've got a life ammunition, they'll shoot to kill. So those are some of the things that we need to start questioning ourselves and be in a position to be told to make us understand why do they have to go with life ammunition to peaceful protests. And as we observe, Chair, we're still experiencing challenges, maybe to the CGE. How do you assist in terms of cases or those who are having challenges to report their cases to police stations and they don't get a proper assistant. Uh, in one of the meetings, Chair, while we are still in an, a normal situation, we took a resolution to say all the police stations must have a um, rape kit test. But when you, you do your oversight, our police stations, to be honest, uh, you still experience the fact that when a person has been raped or there's a gender-based violence, they'll tell you they don't have proper uh, gadgets or they don't have a rape kit test. We're still experiencing that. But to the ECGE, how do you assist to monitor such cases and how do you assist in terms of, of that particular matter? But Chair, positively and strongly so, I, I, I'll propose us to coin a motion of debate in the house in terms of um, the financial assistance to young people on the higher learning of institution. Let me post there, thanks. Thank you, Chair. 
Mama Zibuko. Good morning, Chair. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Greetings to the honorable members, my chairperson, Commissioner uh, Matebula, and my colleagues. Chairperson, I think it is because of the frustration that you did not connect well. My request is to have a moment of silence for the King Yamazulu Uzwelitini Isilo Samabandla. Specifically, I want to put it together for us persons with albinism. When Tandazi Lempunzi was killed in 2015, the Albinism Society found ourselves wanting to say our body parts as women and girls are being prized and being sold. So we took a resolution to go and talk to the king whereby we were told by the king and much appreciated to say, Tina, that the king has now say, you did it in, in most of our uh, meetings, but it's because, that's why I'm saying, let me remind you, it's because of the connections that you forgot to say to us, let's respect the king. And I would like to put it through to the portfolio committee and my colleagues to say, people with albinism are going to start afresh because we are known to say, as persons with albinism, we cannot grow and can be involved in a agriculture. The king assisted us to say, we don't have any hindrance to plow the land. And now as the king has gone, we are going to ask for, uh, for, for, for support from the portfolio committee, from South Africans from the women to support women with albinism to say we are also people, we need to be treated equally and we need to be seen. The king was very vocal in giving us land as persons with albinism in Kavu Natal. The king was very instrumental to say our girl children can participate in Shangeni. The king saw to it that the children with albinism must be treated equally and given the respect by the teachers. So it is going to be very, very important to see enthusiasm for the portfolio committee for women in South Africa to support women with albinism, specifically going to the police stations. As the Albinism Society, we did engage with SAPS, and SAPS has a, a unit in a, a sort of African police where there are vulnerable groups. And we came with a six point plan. This point six point plan should be displayed in each and every police station. Why is that? It's because when a child or a person with albinism has disappeared, the police themselves were educated and are continuously educated to say, you don't say, no, people with albinism disappear. We don't disappear, Chairperson. We are people like every, every person. And we need that if a, a person with albinism is missing or has been trafficked, it is the police station that must move swiftly. And the CPF have seen to it that they do that. So my plea this morning is to say, let's respect all the people, specifically persons with albinism, specifically persons with disabilities, where we think we are going to be left behind now. So we need to rally around ourselves and to say to people, we need to support one another, that we will get a new administration in the Zulu monarchy, that persons with albinism are also persons. They belong to the structure, they belong to the nation. As the other people. So Chair, that's my plea and that's the education. I think I, it was very important to remind 
this forum to say persons with albinism has lost a pacifier, a pacifier, a person who understood very well who we are. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Maziboko. In fact, you have taught us uh, as members of the portfolio committee that uh, uh, there are challenges that you're experience, experiencing as persons with, uh, living with uh, albinism. Uh, we, today, you have taught us something, things that we didn't know. And, uh, and we are grateful that you are one of the commissioners uh, for CGE who's fighting for equality and uh, discrimination uh, amongst our own people or the nation. So um, one day we'll invite you uh, so that you can give us a detailed uh, 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 education so that we understand your issues thoroughly as the members of this portfolio committee. Because you know, sometimes you'll think uh, you know uh, uh, things and uh, when uh, you deal with issues, you just deal with what you know. Things that you don't know, you, you don't deal with. But I'm grateful that we have a commissioner like yourself who's going to help us as members of parliament to understand better on what are the needs of people living with albinism and what is it that uh, we, we must do as lawmakers? Because uh, truly speaking, uh, 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 you know what I like in, in this portfolio committee? Yeah, person, there is no sound. Uh, no sound. sound. I think it's a long. I don't know, but no sound. Yeah, I don't know that you that is. No, I can hear you. Man. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Um, I think, Sister Masonto, uh, I appreciate what uh, you have just told us now. Uh, I, I, I never knew all those things that you were telling us that uh, uh, people living with al albinism are experiencing. And I think, uh, I, ma, 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 Masiko, honorable Masiko, in fact, you were the one who was supposed to have reminded us uh, 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 because Please help us, Mam Noma Sonto and Masiko. Just thank you. Check no, I think maybe no. Oh. Can you help us on that one? All I think we should do, because we just observe a moment of silence, and then Jengoman is born at Inasangamazu, and incidentally being deployed at Guazulu Natal, all the women were asked to put on their heads their black dukes. We don't want to instill our beliefs on other people, but all I was reminding the chairperson this morning is to say, let's observe a moment of uh, the silence and remember everybody, not only the king who has succumbed to, to, to COVID-19, but to everybody in this country who is suffering, and especially as a portfolio community. There are, there are protocols uh, in terms of our kings. So what I was yes. asking you and Masiko is, what is it that we need to do? I understood you when you were saying a uh, moment of silence. But I wanted to understand from Masiko and yourself that uh, when a person is passed on, we do that uh, in, in terms of um, honoring and respecting uh, that person who has passed on. And, and uh, we bow our heads for a few minutes and say, may 
his or her soul rest in peace. But I, I'm not sure about the kings, what protocols must be, what protocols are followed. That's why I was asking Honorable Masiko and yourself. We can I, bow our heads. I'm going to say that, but I want to know, are we saying the same words like we say to everyone? We do, Honorable Chair. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's have a moment of silence. May, may his soul rest in peace. And even those that have passed on during COVID, may their souls rest in peace. Um, I Amen. see Dr. Muliko, your hand is up. Yes, <clears throat> thank you, Chairperson. Um, I'm just coming in to answer your question on the role of CGE <clears throat> with respect to what can be done regarding NS NSFAS. Uh, just a little bit of background, Chair. What CGE has done historically is we've had higher education uh, investigative hearings over the last five to six years where we call in higher education institutions and assess the extent of gender transformation and empowerment. Our focus is mainly <clears throat> on the extent of the workplace to enable uh, the empowerment of women. We look at the executive management, we look at the uh, lecturers, the faculty, the academia. We look at <clears throat> the policies in the workplace. Do they enable uh, gender transformation? Do they have sexual harassment policies? Do they have effic uh, efficacy in respect to the re response to their own measures and, 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 and transformation within uh, the environment within which uh, the academia and the students and the staff are working in. Uh, we also have assessed um, the issue of violence at some of the higher education institution within the investigative hearings. The issue of the financial, um, the financial uh, access is outside necessarily of the scope of what CGE looks at when we look at gender transformation and empowerment, but it definitely is one of the feeders into the constraining environment of empowerment of women in the higher education space i.e. the allocation of academia, lecturers, staff, looking at also the ability of the condition of work, if there's sexual violence or high level of um, oppression within that space. So CGE looks at, at, at the higher education institution from that angle. I think within our mandate, it would be outside of, outside of our scope to look at uh, the, the NSFAS, but I think what we look at more so is the allocation, is the allocation speaking to gender transformation of are we seeing equitable allocation from a financial perspective? So I think that that's where CGE uh, can, can come in to look at the allocation if it's speaking to gender, uh, gender transformation and gender equity. And we look at gender parity in terms of wages. So I think that is our role, Chair. We can look at whereby if, if, if we can get that data and I think CGE can have a space to play, but we haven't necessarily, from my understanding, looked at specifically NSFAS as an institution, but we have looked at higher education institutions in regard to this uh, broader space that I'm talking about. So I just wanted to clarify that, Chair, that we don't necessarily hold NSFAS to account for funding. That's not our scope, but our scope is more to look at this broader issue of gender transformation, but we can look at the allocation of the finance to see if it's uh, equitable. Thank you, Chair. Okay, all right. Um... Yeah, after now you have done that, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Dr. Muliko, may you please also share that report uh, with us? No, teacher. We'll send you the high education report with several ones, investigative hearing reports. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Members. At least we have taken an hour discussing uh, uh, issues that are very much important. And uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna give you time to think on what exactly should we do because uh, Honorable Piri was thinking of a debate and uh, other members are thinking of what? 
I, I would love to hear other members, what do you suggest? Because you see, um, it's important that we talk to those departments directly. You know, um, I was just thinking that if you go and debate only and then after debate what? But what we want to do, we want to, want to hear as the portfolio committee, uh, I'm not saying debate is not important. It is important, but uh, uh, you know, I like to, uh, to action uh, uh, things um, more than just talking. I, I want to see the results of what is happening now. So we are going to talk to all these departments, including the, the one of police, Honorable MPT. So the researchers and, uh, the, the, and, the, and the secretary of the committee will have, to, will have to draft some letters to the departments or request meetings with all these departments. We'll have a management meeting so that we, we can uh, finalize on what is the way forward, uh, 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 honorable members, and we'll give feedback to members on what exactly are we going to do. Seba, thank you very much for all your inputs. And uh, let's go straight to our, our, our agenda. Today, CGE is going to present uh, the reports. If you remember, honorable members, uh, last week we had uh, those reports. Those reports that were outstanding. I think today we are dealing with which one? Accounting for work in progress. But CGE knows which report are we dealing with. I think you are going to present two reports. Is Nelisa here? Yes, Chair, I'm here. They are going to present on the report on state of shelters in SA and the research report of the Commission for Gender Equality accounting for work in progress, assessing progress on the establishment of a national coordinating structure on gender-based violence for 2020. Thank you, Chair. So can they start with uh, accounting for work in progress? Chairperson? Thank you and uh, Chair, good morning. We have two reports uh, today. Uh, the ones that Nelly saw was reading for mm -hmm. us, uh, those are the reports that you're going to present. And then uh, we are going to finish all the reports uh, that you have done. Uh, in the second term, you are going to call you again so that we can finalize all the reports, including the one of Umtualume. Uh, where we are going to invite also uh, uh, Mam Kaula, who was part of the delegation went, uh, that went to Mtualume. So we are going to deal with those ones through the next uh, 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 term. Yeah. Yeah, Chair, you can start with this one. Um, thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Um, Chair, I think just before we, we, we present the first report, I just want to register two apologies. Um, okay. One, Iaga Commissioner Oharango Madiseko. She has been deployed to an annual MIRA conference, uh, which has started today and finishing on the 18th. And it's hosted by the Intelligence Transfer Center and the conferences on gender-based violence, substance abuse, as well as mental health. So she is presenting the Umamo Ohara. The second apology check is Apology Kababu Boda. He's been deployed to the Gender Links Leadership uh, Summit 
which is a SADAC summit um, um, uh, hosted by gender links. Um, and it's uh, looking at leadership and strategic interventions by all role players in the region. Um, o Commissioner Ragolote is with us, but he is experiencing quite a lot of network uh, uh, which goes up and down, I think due to load shedding. So he is in and out and he's really struggling and we are from time to time trying to assist him. So it will be erratic from his side. Chair, the, this morning, we, as a continuation from this, um, that is not old at all this time around. It's a new report um, of the work that we did uh, during the financial year 2019-2020. And this report is basically looking at the work that CGE did using our constitutional mandate uh, in terms of looking a, and assessing progress on the establishment of a national coordinating structure on gender-based violence. Um, and, and this work is work that we did just to look at how the structure has been established and whether there was any structure um, and whether the structure was actually functional and what were the plans of the structure and the programs of that structure, um, uh, whether there is anything that was put in place in terms of the response to gender-based violence, femicide uh, in South Africa. And this work is the work that we did, Chair, following the 2018 Gender-Based Violence Summit that was led by the Honorable President um, in, 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 in November 2018. And we did this work, uh, Chair, because we were quite interested to just follow up on the summit declarations because the establishment of the structure was one of those uh, summit declarations. Chair, if you remember very, very well, uh, those who were in the um, in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the um, uh, gender-based violence uh, uh, forums and and, and 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 structures, you will remember, Chair, that this is not the first attempt. This is the second attempt that the country is actually trying to establish a, a similar structure. Um, Chair, you will remember that in 2012, 2011, 2012. The, 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 the country went into the same plans uh, in terms of establishing a national council for gender-based violence. And this time around, that council was supposed to lead and monitor the implementation of the 365 days of activism against gender-based violence um, you know, uh, for women and children and persons with disabilities. But unfortunately, that structure in 2012, Chair, was destabilized due to lack of funding. Yet at some point, I think there were quite some political agendas that went in. So I think, again, we were quite uh, keen to look at how this particular structure was going to be established, um, looking at the lessons learned from the way the structure was established a few years ago. And again, I think we're taking quite a lot of lessons from the, how the structures the national coordinating structures are established in the country and the lessons that we, we were taking this time around are the lessons from the well-established national coordinating structure of AIDS in the country, which is called SANAC. Um, and um, the, the SANAC structure is well-established and well-coordinated. And I think quite a lot of lessons have been borrowed uh, in terms of establishing this structure. And I must also say that before I hand over to CEO to really give fully fledged presentation, it's not a long presentation. Um, I'm quite intrigued and I'm quite happy that the portfolio committee members are actually um, monitoring and putting their ears on the ground in terms of what has been happening. So what uh, uh, Honorable Sharif brought into um, this meeting this morning, it's one of those things that are quite interesting to actually look at and follow up in terms of what happened to the allocation of the cars, what happened to the allocation of the 1.6 million, uh, sorry, billion, and what happened uh, to quite a number of things in terms of uh, coordinating issues in the country. And I'm quite, I'm quite happy that uh, Honorable Sharif brought those issues uh, on board, which need follow up. Chair, without wasting time, I'm going to hand over to you as very quickly to I was chair. Were you? Yeah, I was. Yeah, they, it, 
they showed us uh, how what they got in Free State. Uh, yes, Chair, and uh, there's quite a lot of work that we have put up uh, in Free State in terms of the follow-up work that we we will we have done in Free State. So I think Commissioner Mutupi, uh, 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 Chair, uh, made a submission that um, a follow-up will be done, and I must say that between Commissioner Mutupi and Commissioner Sibanya Mohale, uh, a lot of follow-up work has been done, Chair, and we will be submitting our work and our response in terms of the findings to the Portfolio Committee, Chair. You will and, submit and, today and, or uh, next term? Um, the, the Free State one, Chair, we might submit next week, but I think the Eastern Cape work, follow-up work, will be submitted today. So there are submissions that we are making in terms of what was raised last week. Okay. So uh, whoever is going to make a presentation today, Magangai Lololo, Magaye to. Agunaba. Yes. Ne? Unjalo Che. We will stick to the Aguz Aguz Aguzubakoni Lololo. Thank you, Che. Okay. Thank you. Over to okay. you, CEO. Nizena, when I'm trying to do my research, I win. No, honorable chair, um, we, 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 were, we, we did some internal interventions because eventually, as much as we didn't conduct the research um, as an institution, we, 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 we get into the process of being savvy with the reports. So um, we, we didn't uh, request the, the researchers to give us information in this platform. Uh, also, uh, I think perhaps the chairperson might uh, want to say that one of them, we, we would get into exposure yesterday in the institution and we, one of the researchers was affected. So we are here on our own, uh, honorable chair and honorable members. Um, I will go into projecting the, the presentation. Um, uh, uh, you must also come back and give us a report on the appeal of Dr. Muliko uh, that we said you must go back to plenary and discuss it. Next term. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Oh, why you, you seem to look uh, surprised because we, we gave you a, a, a task that you must do at your plenary. Honorable Chair, um, may I defer that to the chairperson? Um, I, I think I look surprised in, 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 I'm trying to project the presentation and the, oh. the, the, yeah, the visuals were not working the way I'm used to. Um, oh. Hence I will check if honorable chairperson and honorable members can see the presentation. Yes, we it's, can see. It's shared now. Um, just putting it on slide mode. Okay, it's it's projecting. My apologies, the laptop responds. It takes time to respond, but um, I will start. Uh, presenting uh, with, with what I can view on my side. Uh, as indicated earlier, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, uh, this particular report uh, provides a brief on our assessment of progress on the establishment of the national coordinating structure um, as uh, uh, was uh, envisaged in the declaration, the summit declaration of 2018. I will skip the first slide, which is just introducing who we are at the, as the gender um, commission. Um, in terms of uh, the introduction, we we compiled this uh, this report as the CGE as part of our mandate uh, of monitoring and evaluating the activities of uh, organs of states and other entities. Uh, basically, this report uh, provides insights and findings uh, of the study 
And I will try to present the findings as raw as they are, because uh, from the introduction of the chair, uh, similar challenges relating to the previous structure also pretty much feature here as much as we had learned lessons from the previous uh, structure as alluded to by the chair. So one with this kind of research, you, you want to state the facts without any interpretation, so to speak, uh, because this is one of those uh, projects, if I may use that word, uh, that had a, a high sensitivity as the findings uh, will indicate. So the, the key aim of this particular research was to assess the activities, the programs, or and the plans that were put in place in responding to the provisions of the declaration and also to monitor compliance in terms of inclusivity and the representativeness of different stakeholders and role players, especially within the interim steering committee a committee in performing the mandate that they were established uh, to do. Um, the, I mean, one of the things that we highlight, which is not something we are proud to highlight, is the state of gender-based violence in this country, which obviously inform, informs our response, especially the summit of 2018, uh, to try and put in place measures to address uh, gender-based violence, especially in, in our country, we would begin to see some matters that were just you know, shocking. And, and not every matter is shocking, but we would begin to see some trends that were really unsettling. And even the international bodies that we are party to began to, to notice uh, and tried to, to work with us or give us adv uh, advice in terms of how to address uh, this situation that we are facing. Um, but then again, even us as women uh, being affected by this situation began to actually take action as, as it is very well known by all of us honorable chair uh, and marched to the union building, which eventually culminated with the declaration that I've been alluding to making uh, different demands, uh, especially because the summit was convened by the president. So for us, this was an opportunity to really uh, uh, make demands uh, that we hoped would address uh, uh, this scourge of gender-based violence and, femi and femicide, uh, which is where we the uh, declaration were, uh, came up. Uh, with the commitments that we as the Commission for Gender Equality, of course, had a role to monitor to see if the commitments are being implemented. So this report basically contains uh, the findings uh, of that assessment and, and a review process uh, and activities related to the implementation of the provisions of the, uh, the, the, the summit declaration by different uh, role players. As honorable chair and members will, will know that the president had actually allocated different key players to, to make this happen. Uh, in terms of expeditiously uh, trying to address the, the situation of gender-based violence in the country. So just a brief uh, a, a note on the methodology that we, we actually used uh, key informant interviews uh, uh, in trying to solicit information on this uh, particular research. And uh, obviously our key informants were existing members of the interim steering committee as the key implementing structure of the of the uh, uh, declaration summit we also uh, did observations uh, which involved uh, participating in certain meetings of the uh, interim steering committee uh, across the country as meeting where meetings were happening, consultation meetings were happening across provinces. So we were able to access some of those meetings and, and gather information uh, on the, on, in trying to get information on how this uh, structure was working. Um, our research team also uh, used uh, uh, secondary uh, sources of data that were available consisting of both published and unpublished uh, documents. 
uh, which were made available by the Interim Steering Co Committee and various state, uh, state, uh, state institutions. So different stakeholders that had information on this, uh, on, on this uh, matter were consulted and some did provide uh, the information that we required to make the, the, the intended assessment in this work. <clears throat> And lastly, we also obviously used uh, um, internet sources. So this was in fact just to try and gather as much information as possible and also to compare what these uh, documents are saying, because as we would know, uh, in a situation of any other research, you get information, some of which you need to use to triangulate and see if the information is consistent with the emerging themes uh, of the research. So the key findings, honorable members and honorable chair, um, was that the Interim Steering Committee uh, on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide was created as, as an outcome of the Presidential Summit on, uh, on, G on GBVF, uh, uh, which was intended to set up a permanent multi-sectoral structure to coordinate a country response towards this sketch within six months and to give attention to other commitments uh, contained in the declaration. Um, our findings reveal that the interim steering committee was disbanded uh, in April 2019 with the structure that uh, was supposed to be developed not yet or to be established not yet in place. So our study noted that the, 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 the ISC, the, inter, the interim steering committee focused on tasks or activities that were not necessarily contained in the summit uh, declaration and the conclusion of the of the study after observing that what, what was that this could have led to delays and ultimate failure to uh, of the interim steering committee to establish the multi sectoral coordinating straight structure that was to be the national council on gender based violence and femicide um, for a temporary structure with a limited lifespan of six months, uh, the ISC's attention was divided. And these are, I think, the activities that we're saying were not necessarily in the declaration because the attention was divided towards uh, three enormous tasks, that is establishing the council, crafting the national strategic plan, which was a task allocated to the actual structure if it was established, the, the National Council on GBVF, but the, the, the Interim Steering Committee began to look at that. Um, and then uh, and, and the crafting of management of the implementation of the Emergency Response Action Plan that was unveiled by the President uh, on 18th September 2020. Uh, the crafting of the NSP and the work related to the era which is the uh, emergency response uh, action plan, were clearly outside of the scope of the interim steering committee. And this way were the findings because that the steering committee was supposed to establish the National Council for coordinating, but uh, they, they, they went on beyond, the, the NSP and the ERA was supposed to be developed by this uh, uh, structure, but the the, the ISC uh, continued to outline uh, 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 these activities. Um, so it, in terms of setting up of the ISC itself, uh, the, the commission study noted a number of loopholes uh, and challenges, uh, which include, uh, uh, which it appeared that there was no document available that provides details of how the ISC was to be created, its membership, its day-to-day -day operations, appointment of office bearers, scope of its powers, size of its members, allocation of responsibilities and resources. And these were our observations uh, during the research through this, the, the methodology that I have presented earlier through speaking to members of the I, I, I see, uh, you know, uh, reading reports that were provided information from different sources. So this observation was made. Um, and, and this lack of clarity on important details relating to the creation of the 
and the operations of the ISC created friction and fragmentation in the gender sector, with some of the members of the civil society organizations reporting that the ISC lacked transparency and that it was failing to account on its processes and activities to, to civil society, constituencies, uh, and to the general public. Um, it is also important to place on record uh, that there was widespread uh, reluctance and fear among some of uh, the members of the steering committee to be interviewed, the key informants in this study. As a result, some of the key details uh, regarding the operations of the, the ISC could not uh, be obtained. Um, as I indicated earlier, this was one of those areas that are highly sensitive, especially when it comes to, to research. So as such, the, this limited cooperation from members of the IISC, um, uh, important questions relating to the structural design of, of, of the ISC could not be answered, such as the issue of jo joint co-chairpersons, one from civil society and the other from the office of the president, uh, a social policy advisor to the president. Basically, these were the recommendations. Um, so uh, de also details of information was not available regarding the nature and the division of responsibilities of the, uh, the co-chairpersons, as well as whether or not uh, whether or not there was the exercise of jo joint and equal levels of authority and responsibility over the affairs of the ISC. And honorable chair and honorable members can, uh, I suppose, uh, deduce from this, when you have a situation like this, it becomes difficult in any context to, to, to be able to have a process to follow through with activities and achieve the achievement, uh, sorry, and achieve the goals of the structure. So there was also a lack of clarity regarding nomination, appointment, or election to office of the membership of the ISC. Guidelines governing the governance of the structure, especially questions such as the entity with the authority to amend, change, or extend its terms of office when it ran out of the six-month term limit imposed by the declaration. So all these things were not really uh, obviously evident as we were uh, uh, conducting uh, this research. Um, although the nomination uh, process of the ISC was never clarified, it is a fact that the, IS, the ISC had a membership composition of various government departments, civil society organizations, development partners, academic institutions, and, and, and research institutions. Uh, at some point, uh, the, the membership was at around 70 representative, which, uh, I mean, at face value, uh, it's significantly too large. And it, it makes, uh, it contributed, so to speak, uh, to, to this be, uh, resulting into a very complex internal operations and procedures that potentially uh, may have contributed to the structure not really achieving uh, the goals that it was set to achieve. In terms of the resourcing of the ISC, um, the summit declaration had mandated that the, the, the funding be regulated in terms of the P PFMA as it is a, a law and, and general practice in the public service. Uh, details relating to the extent of allocation of public funds to the ISC, however, were not publicly made available. Uh, informal conversations with some of the members of the IAC indicated that the IAC activities were funded by several uh, government departments and, and development agencies. And suffice to emphasize here, Honorable Chair and members, that we say informal because, as indicated, uh, interviewing members of the IAC was a bit tricky in a sense that people were not willing to, to be, people were, were wanted to be anonymous, so to speak, uh, because it, it looked like the information that would be shared or the information that was required was considered uh, highly sensitive uh, uh, by members of uh, the ISC. Um, 
the council was tasked with the development of the national strategic plan of the GBVF within six months, as I alluded to earlier. And uh, 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 and it's established by virtue of Article 4 of the declaration. However, uh, uh, the IAC also took, undertook to the responsibility to develop the NSP uh, for, for, for reasons that are not, uh, were not clear for, for this research as we were seeking to understand why activities that were, they were not tasked were actually performed by this structure. So the ISC set up a technical working team uh, responsible for, for, for crafting the strategy, a consulted headed the drafting of the overall consolidated NSP based on feedback obtained from uh, communities, uh, uh, consultative meetings that are alluded to earlier. And the commission observed that community consultative meetings uh, uh, where we noted the following uh, in these meetings, the one that we were able to attend, that they were predominantly attended by lay audiences who could not meaningfully uh, contribute uh, to, to, to the discussions or inputs into the strategy. And the audience were the audiences were, were the audience was not uh, segregated according to its level of knowledge, resulting in a few members of the audience dominating. And I think these are some of the common observations that we see generally in different uh, platforms where issues are discussed. Um, uh, the main language was English. Again, this was a language barrier. So these are some of the, uh, the, 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 the observations that we made that we felt uh, perhaps uh, were, were weaknesses uh, in terms of uh, the, the, our observation, observations of the uh, community consultative meetings. An example in, in Venda, uh, the a situation arose where issues of gender dy dynamics uh, were not taken into consideration because as we know uh, in where you 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 mix men and women uh, you know uh, in this kind of discussions the the the, the perceived uh, submissive uh, uh, females so to speak in a in a patriarchal society end up being dominated again and for this kind of exercise, one would imagine that this would be one of the things that we, we, we identify first as a limitation and mitigate against that. Um, also, audiences were not given enough um, time to engage with the draft uh, strategy uh, during the, the processes of consultation. Uh, the, an online portal was made available, but then again, you find that people who should be making input don't have access to this. Uh, Honorable Chair, I just want to indicate that uh, on this, I have um, uh, three more slides to run through. Uh, the Department of Social Deve Development, having identified some of these weaknesses, uh, also tried to conduct their own uh, consultations with uh, audiences in, in some of the provinces in the country with a more targeted audience for the purpose of the consultation. Um, so th th this was tasked to the ISC in accordance with Article 3 of the Summit Declaration. Uh, however, um, the, the ISC had subcommittees to ensure the achievement of this task but the CGE was initially allowed to attend a meeting of this group. However, access was soon after denied. Um, the, the, the CGE also did manage to get hold of draft organizational structure, uh, which was contained in an official ISC discussion document at the time. Uh, I think at the time that we still had access to, to, to the ISC. And from this, the following were, were noted that the proposed structure seemed uh, large and cumbersome as indicated earlier that at some point it was at a, a membership of 70. The discussion or document implied that the council would also implement programs on the round 
or uh, uh, in it, that which means initiation, implementation, prosecution, monitoring and evaluation of programs to address injustices of the past, providing strategic vision and leadership and ensuring allocation of resources. And one here can see that the, the, the scope uh, uh, has expanded. The discussion document um, uh, notes an advisory role of the, the council presumably to government in general or the president in particular. However, it seemed uh, that government would already have heavily been involved uh, as the structure was represented by different uh, level of uh, government structures. So this also was not clear because as uh, from a research perspective, it comes across as being referee and player. But this is something that obviously, given the circumstances, uh, perhaps it may be debated, but in terms of research observations, that's how it appeared. Uh, as uh, the president being the chairperson uh, raises a few questions relating to the practicality uh, nature and extent of his involvement. Also, as a chairperson, presumably the president would ultimately be accountable to parliament in addition to being head of government and president of the country. Again, uh, as, as when I started, I, I talked about how you know, engaging the president on this issue was a strategic approach. But here further, when you look at the practicality of having him as the chair uh, uh, of, the, of the structure, it, it didn't seem to be uh, something that would, be, uh, would work uh, ideally. So the discussion document created an executive board as well of 12 members five from government, six from civil society, and the chairperson of the CGE. It did not specify who would lead the executive board, including its powers. It was also unclear whether the president's position as a chairperson of the council would, was meant to also chair uh, the executive board. So there was also no provision made for, for plenary. Um, and the, in the last slide, honorable chair, we. Um, Sorry, this is not uh, the last slide. This, this is the 18th slide presentation. Uh, my apologies on that. I was confusing it with the next presentation. The discussion document created a secretariat headed, headed by a CEO. It, uh, it was unclear again whether or not the CEO would have executive powers and functions in relation to the powers and functions of the executive board. Uh, finally, the proposed structure consistent of national, provincial, and local and ward level structures. However, the exact governance and operational structure on provincial and local levels needed elaboration in order to avoid confusion uh, on the ground. Um, the, the implementation of the uh, emergency response action plan uh, in this regard, the, 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 era, the implementation of the era was assigned to the ISC by the president. The aim was to fight the start of uh, gender-based violence uh, uh, against women, uh, sorry, gender violence against women and children through a coordinated government and civic society effort. Uh, the initial budget of 1.1 billion uh, funding was later increased to 1.6 billion. The Iraq had uh, five thematic areas, uh, as well as set interventions, indicators, targets, lead institution, uh, more importantly, assigned responsibility under various thematic areas. At the time of our report, uh, uh, the commission was not privy to the detailed information, uh, the ISC's implementation on the Iraq. However, we, we now conclude that the ERAP was necessary, even though a recent review of the ERAP found that the implementation lacked the needed preparation, coordination, effective oversight, and accountability to, to render it a, a successful initiative. So uh, getting to the last four slides, uh, uh, Chair, I am going to just present the, uh, the, the recommendations uh, briefly from this ob the observation of this report that there should be a transparency and accountability in the functions of the ISC around the formation of the council. 
uh, in consultation with other stakeholders, especially civil society, and that this process should be open to the public and structures like parliament to provide oversight uh, in this regard and inform the, the public on key developments. So that for us uh, seems to be very important, important for this structure to work better. Um, we also recommend that the ISC mandate be extended with clear time frames and targets set to assist in some of the critical processes, such as implementation of the NSP and the formation of the council. Uh, the declaration of the GBV summit might, must guide this work. And this basically is saying the process is very necessary, but it needs to be implemented with due diligence and in need oversight and rules and responsibilities uh, clarified and follow the guide uh, that was intended uh, by the declaration. We also recommend that there should be a formal guiding document which is available to the public. That is the terms of reference which clearly outline the functions and mandate of the ISC, the scope of its powers, as well as the reporting accounting obligation of its office bearers. And this honorable chair and honorable members are the witnesses that we identify, therefore, uh, uh, recommending that we, we, we do this uh, uh, properly as it was intended. The, the terms of reference document should be developed in consultations with all stakeholders involved, including civil society, government, and uh, developmental uh, uh, partners, uh, so that it is inclusive uh, and people can buy into it. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members and Commissioners. Thank you very much, uh, 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 CEO. You know, I was just reading this report and uh, I'm not sure whether you have shared this report with the presidency and uh, the department and the department of women. Chair, um... If I may request the chair to, to, to indicate. Let me, let, let me raise three issues with you. Okay. Um, if you did not share with the, the department, why? And if you have shared with the department, what were the outcomes of, the, of, the, of, of that meeting? Two. With regards to the current uh, developments in establishing uh, uh, the National Council for Gender-Based Violence and Femicide, what are your observations as CGE in this regard? The last one. With regards to the National Council uh, Gender-Based Violence and Femicide a, a, a Bill, have you uh, made inputs on that bill as CGE? Why am I asking you this? One, there's one issue that uh, I consistently, even members, they are consistently supporting my view in, with regards to it. That, uh, you know, when coming to that uh, representation on how the National Council must be constituted, uh, one thing that we saw as, a, as, a, as a, a loophole or as a gap is that thing of NGOs having more representation than government, which we are disagreeing with. That a government must lead issues of gender-based violence and femicide and must be accountable to the citizens of the country. It's not vice versa. It cannot be correct that 
uh, the NGOs will be the one who will be having more representation than government. So that's why it's important for us as the portfolio committee to hear from you on the inputs that you have made as CGE. It can be correct. So there was an issue that they, they wanted to, to put or to insert in that uh, in that whether it's a bill or what, but they were talking about a trust. And we, 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 we did not support it as the portfolio committee. And, 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 and at the end of the day, and we were proven right by National Treasury because National Treasury disagreed with the department that uh, 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 there can be a trust. So that's why it's important for us to hear from CGE on what were your exact inputs that you have made. But uh, uh, I'm sure uh, I want honorable members uh, 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 to raise questions on this, uh, 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 clarity seeking questions and make their comments on this document that you just finished presenting a uh, CEO so that we get the response uh, accordingly. Because when we take all the documents at the same time, sometimes we even forget important issues that we want to raise with you. So I will now hand over to Honorable members to uh, ask uh, seeking clarity questions, uh, clarity seeking questions and uh, weather comments so that uh, we, the CGE can respond, uh, um, so that you can respond to wh what members will be asking you. And then at the same, and then after that, we can go to the next report. Over to you, honorable members. I, can I get hands? I see Mam Shengwa and the honorable Sharif. Uh, honorable Basiko. I just see only three hands. Can, 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 can honorable members uh, 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 come in in that order? Oh, okay. Thank you, Chair Person. Okay, Honorable Mamshengwa, Honorable Sharif, Honorable Masiko, Honorable, you know, Masiko is it's, it's your hand that your your hand is different from all these hands. <laughs> Yours, I think. <laughs> it's my it's my skin tone, Chair Person. <laughs> Proper. Okay, is that then? <laughs> Uh, and then uh, Mam Sonti and uh, Babu Nobo and Honorable Mkweba. Thank you very much, Honorable Members, in that order. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. Let me welcome the report and greet to you, Chairperson, and the honorable members yeah. and the panel of CGE. I have only three questions, concerned questions on CGE. 
CGA identified that there was no document available that provided details on how ISC uh, was to be created. Did the summit declaration make mention of these critical aspects? Secondly, at the first meeting of the ISC was the aspect discussed and assigned. One of your recommendations is that there should be a formal guiding document which is available to the public of to the public in terms of references of ISC, which also outlines the functions and mandates, etc. Who do you propose should be specifically assigned to do this? It seems failure to take control is the, a key concern, but again, your recommendation do not appear to speak to these aspects. Lastly, during the presentation at several points, you stated that CGE was initially allowed to attend meeting, but then access was later denied. Was the reason were given for this? Are there no formal min minutes for this meeting which could be assessed? Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, Honorable Sharif. Um, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, let me start by saying this report is damning. Um, number one, I'm shocked that the CGE struggled to get information from the ISC. And um, but it also reminds me, Chairperson, and I'm, and I'm sure you remember how difficult it's always been to get the ISC to come report to this portfolio committee. We have requested them to come many times. We had a, a joint meeting to, to, to find out the workings of the ISC, and they always told us, we don't report to parliament. We report to the president. So why must we come to your committee? So the fact that they are secret and, and, and they're not sharing information with the CGE, who is an independent chapter nine institution that has every single right and mandate to research and, and, and put a report together and investigate a report. And the fact that they don't even give that information is very concerning. And naturally, it, it begs the question, what are they hiding? Because if everything was as smooth as they say it is, and GBV is actually a priority, then they would be very forthcoming with information. So this secrecy and this, the, 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 this um, veil of secrecy is very concerning, Chairperson. And it's very interesting for me because these are the comments. This report is exactly what we've been discussing in the committee. Um, it's almost as if the CGE was, 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 was watching our previous meetings and, and listening to the conversations we've been having because we've raised these issues with the ISC. And, and I'm really happy that um, now we have an actual independent investigation that had happened. Chairperson, I want to find out from the CGE, number one, has this report been published and has it been made public? Um, if yes, when? And if not, when will it be? Uh, number two, has the CGE gotten a response from the chairpersons of the ISC? And what, and what has that looked like? Have they been given this report and had <clears throat> time to, to comment? Um, and I also wanted to find out, um, chairperson, perhaps 
um, this gives us an opportunity with these findings and these recommendations to indeed get the ISC or some representatives to come to the portfolio committee because they very easily go to conferences and speak on online virtual lectures, but they refuse to come to account to, to, to parliament. Um, and, and we, by, by given the, the powers by the constitution, have every single right to call them to come to account. And, and honestly, after this damning report, I would suggest that the ISC come to this portfolio committee so that we can ask them these questions that perhaps the CGE might not be able to answer. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Sharif. Uh, Honorable Masiko. Masiko. Yeah, um, I think Chair One must firstly uh, welcome the, 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 the presentation that has been made by CGE. And I think for to a greater extent as a committee, there is a certain level of vindication in relation to the operations of, 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 of the steering committee, Chairperson. I thoroughly share the concerns that have been shared and I think it's about time, Chairperson, that these grave concerns that are raised not only by us, but have been proven through a, 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 a system of in investigation and research must be attended to. And I think it would assist us, Chairperson, in that we do now have a, a, a strong uh, support in relation to research-based um, findings that will assist us in pushing forward um, uh, our arguments on the workings of uh, the, 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 the interim steering committee being private or only open to those that are within it. And Chairperson, for me, in terms of public interest, it's important for us to get to the bottom of the workings of this committee. And it, it really does bring a, a, a great level of a, a sense of deja vu in relation to, to, to what we are talking about today, because we've spoken about this several on several occasions chairperson i have been covered on on the publishing of the report uh, you you have raised um, on the question that i had chairperson on whether or not the president and the department of women youth and persons with disabilities have been privy to the report or the report has been shared with them so i think cge must bring that to light because we'd like to know how far they've gone in, in relation to engaging on the findings that uh, and the resolutions that um, they've, they've they've picked up on the report secondly chairperson um one would like to know on whether uh, CGE has made any input or submissions on the first draft of the um, uh, of the bill, I know that you have you have uh, highlighted the fact it's very important for the committee to to hear and what those inputs have been, and whether or not, Chairperson, uh, the commission has been monitoring the secretariat itself and the workings of the secretariat. We know that late last year there was, I think it was December, if not January. Uh, the issue of advertising of posts, which will be um, housed in the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. Mm -hmm. So one would like to know whether CGE has been monitoring the activities around uh, um, the working of the Secretariat itself, and they have made any observation in relation to, 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 to the, the Secretariat. And um, whether or not CGE has been able to, a greater extent, been able to assess the department's uh, prevention strategy in relation to gender-based violence and femicide. Uh, if not, why uh, have they not done it? And if they have been able to assess uh, the prevention strategy, what have been their findings in this regard? Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. That's, a, that's as far as I'd like to um, engage the report. Masiko, I didn't hear you whether you did ask about the whether they've uh, assessed the department strategic plan, uh, GPV prevention plan. That was my last question, Chair. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, uh, Mam Sonti. 
Mm, thank you, Chairperson. Um, I greet you again and the thank honorable you. members and uh, the GPV, I mean, um, the Antitanti GPV and uh, the CGE um, representatives. Uh, Chairperson, um, uh, last week, the presentation was on the access at uh, the work on the police station on GPV. And I think even today, it is the continuation of the program. Chairperson, please, um, you must forgive me if I'm out of order, but I don't think I'm out. Chairperson, I asked about, or I commented about the failure of the CPF which is community police forum in the communities, who might work closely with the police. I did not hear exactly the response as I was giving what I am experiencing and also demand and ask the, uh, the department to provide them with the resources they need so that they can work. Uh, uh, freely. And what I know, Chepesin, are those, uh, the, this SCPF, are those people who are not far from the communities and I think are the first person to go even to the scene when the problem is uh, happening in the communities before the police come. So I, 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 I don't know, Chepesin, maybe the answer was there because of the networks, because we're in and out in the communities because of the, uh, the network. I don't know, Chepesin, but um, uh, 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 yeah, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma'am Sondi. Uh, we, no, we are not out of order. Thank you, Chairperson. Mm. Uh, Honorable uh, Ma'am Ebabu uh, Ngobo. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Good morning, honorable members, commissioners, and CEO. Uh, Chairperson, I just wanted to comment on the concern that the CGE noted in its report or research regarding the refusal or reluctance of many of the participants from government departments and civil society organizations to be interviewed for this study. So I think that this is a, a serious concern this lack of accountability and transparency by the interim steering committee is really concerning. And I think that this is something that we must really look into as the portfolio committee going forward. I also would like to support the point that Honorable Sharif raised earlier on that we must get the ISC to come appear before the committee so that they may account. And the question that I will... Uh, the point that Honorable Sharif raised that we must get the ISC or representatives to come and account before the portfolio committee. And uh, my question to the CGE, I, I just want to know if they have submitted the report to all the their problem, relevant Yes. Uh, no, the, the problem that uh, we are going to experience is that uh, Remember, the inter interim steering committee is no longer the. Uh, so I'm not sure. I was thinking of, of, of that question uh, when uh, 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 Honorable Sharif was speaking. I was thinking about it, about it on how can we go about it uh, because it's, it's no longer there. Remember, their term of office lapsed. And they wanted, uh, and, and then it was extended, and they wanted another extension, and we didn't uh, support that extension. You remember? Ye because yes, yes, sir. Clearing issues that this report is covering now. Yeah. Because they were refusing to account to the portfolio committee, uh, first of all, and uh, they were claiming that uh, they are uh, reporting. Uh, to the presidency, uh, president's office, and so on. So it was difficult for them to call them again to come to the portfolio committee. You know, they ran away for a long time. Yes, Chairperson. Uh, 
Yeah, but I think that we must try as much as we can to get someone to account because looking at these damning allegations or findings by the CGE, so I think someone at the end of the day must come and account. Uh, my my question to the CGE, I just wanted to know if the report has been shared with all the relevant I'm not saying wrong. institutions. I'm not saying wrong. <laughs> no, I understand, Jefferson. I understand. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is um maybe what we need to check uh, if it's possible for us to call them again uh maybe the our researchers must find that find out for us ne? that uh, we want to call them to come in account based on this report kashifa is here. yeah yeah yes chief good right ne Yes, Chairperson, I agree. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Chairperson, my question would be, I just wanted to know from the CGE if the report has been shared with all the relevant institutions and government departments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When I was joining the number three, we have to be able to find out what we have to do with the CGE and what we have to do. So we should lumbu zvalegi lega kuf. Honorable Mkweba. Honorable Mkweba. Mkweba. Eh, eh, good morning, honorable chair. Morning. And uh, honourable members and the team from the CGE, Chair, let me welcome the presentation by the CGE. And um, I've um, noted, Chair, the key findings of the study. But, however, I think I must um, agree with the honorable member that uh, indicated that um, the same ISC was requested to appear before the portfolio committee last in 2019, if I still remember. And uh, again, it was uh, again the same request was um, done in the joint portfolio committees. But however, from time to time when they were requested to appear before us, I still remember the last meeting we had at the old uh, council chamber at, in parliament when one of them came to represent the 70 members that uh, the, 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 the CGE have then uh, presented to us that a team, that team had uh, 70 members. However, oh. Chair, I understand the fact that you are saying to the portfolio committee, now the ISC has been disbanded. I think that was the presentation that it has been disbanded uh, in 2019, April the 30th. Now there are these uh, key findings of the study that uh, one wish that um, one way or the other, the team, whether it's one person, two persons or more than that, must definitely appear before the portfolio committee. Because my, 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 my worry is that chair, who's then gonna respond on these findings on their behalf? if we can't request them to appear before us. And secondly, Chair, my worry is that while they, they are these, there is these uh, key findings, is that my worry is that, uh, you know, my problem is that how then do we achieve or deal or manage the issues of gender-based violence and, and femicide? If then there's no one to account on, on these key findings by the CGE. 
However, Chair, lastly, I must then also support the recommendations from this report. You know, because, because I know that uh, one of the, the recommendations is to make sure that there's transparency and accountability in the function of the ISC. That's why then, Chair, it's important that one or two of them must appear before the portfolio committee for further responses. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, uh, Honorable Mkweba. Um, I think also the department must uh, account uh, Honorable Mkweba because remember uh, in their APP, uh, there is a work related to gender-based violence and femicide. You remember? It, it, it's in, in, in one of their sub-programs. -pro so the, the department also must account. And in addition to some of the questions that you've asked, you know, I, I want to check with the CGE with regards to the structure that the, the department was proposing on whether initially they were proposing that they want to establish a, a, a council according to um, SANAC, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, after, later on, uh, when they were presenting that report in the portfolio committee, um, when we look at the structure on how SANAC was uh, established and we look at what they were proposing to us, it was a different. So we, we told them that the model that they are coming with, it's not exactly what SANAC uh, uh, did. So they must not say SANAC model, they must say partially because uh, it's not everything that was there that SANAC did. And, and them, they did also. Uh, it's, it's just different. So what we want to know from you is whether you have, uh, you, you, did you get an opportunity to, to look at uh, the proposed structure that they want to establish? And then uh, I don't know whether there are other members that I, I left out. Uh, if not, it's okay. We can now give to CGE to respond. CEO. Chair, Deputy Chair. Honorable Member. Deputy Chair? Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening with CEO and the chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, the questions that have been asked and uh, given by the Honorable Members, I just want to thank them for. They're very valid. I think let's just, uh, I'm going to be straight to the point, Chair. Honorable okay. Weber put it very poignant to say, how do you call to account a structure that has been disbanded? it's very difficult to, to do that. And I think the problem that we have encountered is that the timing of the release of our own reports, we're finding that uh, we respond after the fact and then they have a limited impact because we can not even ourselves go back to the structure now that it has been disbanded. I think the C CEO um, will just give insight on the um, sharing of the report to the presidency and the, cause that's a <clears throat> administrative one and uh, on the response received from, from the Office of the Presidency. I think the third point that has been raised throughout is in holding the, uh, in holding the different um, steering committee members to account for non-participation. Uh, non I think I want to come in there. We did in, in that moment uh, try to deal with this um, through the researchers uh, by writing severally to the different uh, participants in that ISC. 
uh, we were oversight, but we didn't stop our work. It is uh, unacceptable that CGE's work was hindered in that regard. At the time, we didn't stop doing what we were mandated to do, which was to oversight and see the efficacy of that process. And so we continue to do our work, hence we're able to present a report. I think the weakness for CGE is really the timing of its own response and being able to implement. I think more importantly is how the responses that we have recommended are now being factored into the NSP process, not just the NSP process, but the actual uh, oversight committee and the council. Um, and I think that's where the weaknesses are, Chairperson. I'll allow the other members to, to input uh, with more clarity as well. But I think that we must admit that some of the timing and delay of our own release of some of the reports make it uh, weak for us to actually deal with the very recommendation. So I think we need to be more concise with our timing. Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Tamliko, if you remember also, there was a, there was a proposal of uh, uh, establishing a secretariat. Also, they, I want to check with you uh, as CGE whether you were agreeing with that proposal or what, because I remember uh, the portfolio committee, there were things that we did not support. Uh, and uh, in their report, they were saying they have received 100 and, 130, if not 180. Uh, yeah, yeah, 180, according to their report. They received 180 nominations. And um, you know what, what, what we we'll love to see from would like to see from CGE is that maybe you, you, you must work close with this process. Because once it, it, uh, they, the department implements other things and that are, are, are not constitutional, then we'll have a problem because you are there to monitor whether things are done correctly or not. So uh, our request is that uh, 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 please work closer with the department, especially in relation to this establishment or of, of the council. And just go through all the their documents and understand exactly on what is it that they are doing and why are they doing whatever they are doing. That will be our, our request from you. Okay. Um, a, a, a deputy chair, you were handing over to the CEO. Yes, Chairperson, I think the CEO need to answer the specific questions you asked on the administrative um, input. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Chair, I think before CEO comes in, can I just clarify one issue, Chair, with regards to the first question, key question? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. I think, uh, Chair, you, you, you are quite spot on uh, with your, your latter uh, remark or comment that uh, CGE needs to work very closely with um, the department in terms of looking at what kind of documents are, are, are developed, what kind of structures are, are, are established, and, 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 and what kind of models are they coming up with in terms of establishing a national coordinating structure. Chairperson, I just want to say that ordinarily, if for an example, a structure is disbanded for whatever reason, you will then hand over everything and even CGE give recommendations to the structure that is taking over from the structure that has been disbanded. <clears throat> I think one of the questions that we have asked a uh, chair was that, um, you know, are we in, were we in agreement with the establishment of a trust? Chairperson, even before we get to that, uh, because from where I'm sitting, Chair, the recommendations, if you look at the four recommendations, um, they were not even going to the establishment of the trust, which uh, we may not agree at this point or at the point of conducting our own assessment and oversight work. But what we recommended initially was that perhaps the interim uh, steering committee uh, term be extended. I think, I think that's we recommended that six months was perhaps um, too, too short. Um, and um, the recommendation that we made at the time was that, um, would there be any possibility of the ISC, ISC to, be, to be extended so that they can do 
um, what they were supposed to do. But unfortunately, on the 30th mm -hmm. of April, this structure was disbanded. So Chair, in our continuity, because even the heading of the report says accounting for work in progress, this is work that we will continue to be very closely monitoring uh, moving forward. So in our own articulations and our own thoughts, Chair, it, you know, the process was that as soon as this structure a, 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 a becomes disbanded a, in April then, we were hopeful that there was going to be a, a, a long-term national council on gender-based violence and femicide, which we were going to hand over the report to, together with the findings and recommendations. And Chair, let me say and, and, and put this in record that up to today, there is no council that is in place in terms of actually sharing our findings. However, what has been happening, the progress and where we should actually be going now, Jay, is that the Department of Women has actually taken over the uh, coordination role. Um, and I must say that um, because I want to actually follow uh, the processes that have been happening. So the process underway is that the, 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 the establishment of the National Council hasn't taken place. Uh, the, the National Gender uh, Based Violence Council and the Interim Ministerial Committee um, was then uh, established. And, and, and there were also some of the uh, structures that were looking at coordinating at a national level. And the, the, the task at hand was to actually take over from the ISC and ensure that there is an appointment of a long-term structure that will coordinate. And what has happened uh, was that instead of the establishment of that structure and taking over from the work that the ISC has done, nothing was done, but the Department of Women, uh, Youth and Persons with Disabilities has however taken um, you know, um, the lead in terms of making sure that uh, they continue the work of one, establ establishing the interim board of trustees, Number two, uh, that board of trustees was going to be one that was going to establish a national council. So this has not been done. So mm -hmm. I think where we should actually make follow up all of us and do oversight is with the Department of Women that is currently uh, tasked to do and carry on the work that is at hand. So Chair, I, I, I think this is where we will actually uh, move to and monitor very closely as as CGE and perhaps invite the members of the portfolio committee to also, you know, um, hold the department in a, to account in terms of uh, asking where things are at and ensuring whether uh, we follow on, um, uh, you know, the work that uh, they were supposed to do having taken over from the IESC. Thank you, Chair. I think, uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson. I think uh, the other thing that we had a concern, to, a concern with was the, the, the declaration of the summit. You know, one, one, one argument that we put on the table as the portfolio committee was that uh, they were telling us that they are implement, the department was telling us that no, we are implementing uh, the resolutions of the, of the summit and uh, as they are and uh, the declaration uh, it, whatever the declaration was saying, uh, they are implementing it. And but our question was, but in terms of processing, do you want to tell us that you don't apply your minds, you just take the declaration raw as is, and you implement the the, the declaration raw as is, without even checking whether this is a a a a a a. a, a required or this is, is not required or whether this is not relevant or it's in line with the law or whatever. That, that was another argument that we have put on the table with the, the department. And we that's why we're even disagreeing with the, the representation. So I think Chairperson, um, even yourselves, if you look at uh, 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 the, the declaration and the way they, the department wanted to implement uh, 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 some of the things, uh, uh, we are requesting you to work closer to the department because as you do moni your monitoring, you will be able to advise on what, what is it that needs to be done. 
because really and truly, that's why up until now they haven't established the a, 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 a council because why? They want to do shortcuts. So once you don't do, uh, 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 you want to do shortcuts, uh, uh, you don't follow procedures up, up to, uh, accordingly, you'll have delays because you'll go present and come back and go. Umutila chairs, that goes. How? Yo, yeah, I'm mute and relent them, but I'm mute on your way. Uh, so that's why, Chairperson, uh, 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 we are seriously uh, uh, appealing to you that uh, please work with them closer. Just scrutinize every each and every document that is in relations in relation to the issues of gender-based violence and femicide. We will do that, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, you said the CEO must come in? Uh, yes, please, Chair. OK. CEO? Thank you, Honorable Chair. In terms of the sharing of the report, uh, I have been informed that this is the first platform where we are presenting the report. And this report is a continuation of three uh, uh, reports on gender-based violence. The, the first report was on gender-based violence statistics and uh, followed by the coordinating uh, national coordination structure, which is, which is what we are presenting. And the continuation now, the next one is the implementation of ERAP. Uh, that we are concluding as one of the targets for this quarter. So basically the researchers are saying to me, eventually we will have a, a three part series of these studies where we will present to, to the relevant uh, uh, stakeholders, including the presidency. And I think when we were reviewing the era uh, internally, uh, the, the DC, the, the, the deputy chair, has, uh, 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 you know, we have explored uh, avenues through which we will present the reports to the relevant stakeholders and then how we launch them, uh, publicize them uh, to, to the public. But at this stage, uh, the short answer is that this is the first platform that we are presenting to. Thank you, Chair. I think the other one that you need to respond to is that how are you monitoring and evaluating the implementation of NSP and, and GPVF. Chair, at this stage, um, I don't, and uh, the honorable chair, sorry, the chair of the CGE and commissioners might uh, correct me here because I, um, I, 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 I don't know of a report where we are actually monitoring the NSP. Uh, and hence, I say I speak under correction uh, in this regard. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I think this one is very much important for us. Um, Chair and Deputy Chair. Um, thank you very much for the question, Chairperson, and uh, uh, Deputy Chair will also um, be allowed to respond. Um, Chairperson, you will remember that the um, National Strategic Plan was developed um, uh, starting from the times of the ISC, and it was given <laughs> to the um, um, independent consultant to do so. There were consultations that happened in provinces and everywhere, Chair. Um, without waste of time, I must say that um, the Chair, the, I'm sorry, the, the, the National Strategic Plan was on GBV and F was then approved by parliament last year. So following the approval chair, what we have done was to actually look at the document just to familiarize ourselves with the document um, ourselves. Um, the document has six key pillars, which again, we are trying to find um, you know, ourselves, but this is also one area that we have agreed in our planning processes 
that started last year in November, that this is going to be one of the um, key uh, issue that we will follow or key matter that we will follow. Uh, and it's part and it forms part and parcel of our 2021-2022 uh, APP. So what we normally do, our monitoring work, our work that needs to happen um, has to go into the annual performance plans. And, and I think when we submit and when we present and defend our APP, in the next meeting chair, you will actually pick up that this is one of the work that we will actually be doing. It's a five-year strategy chair, and we will actually also make sure that it gets into our five-year plans as we move forward. But we will definitely be one of the things that we will be monitoring, and we will constantly um, uh, report to this portfolio committee in terms of progress uh, made, in terms of the rollout um, not only the rollout of the uh, national strategic plan, but also how it has been taken on the ground, the update, as well as how people understand and responding uh, to it. And not only by government, but also by various, um, 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 you know, private as well as uh, civil society organizations. So this is something that we will actually take on in the next financial year. Chair. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, that will be much Im important for you uh, that you monitor both uh, civil society organizations and, and, and what government is doing. Because, um, in fact, you, you reminded me that, uh, by the way, uh, the, the council will be constituted by both uh, government and, and civil society organizations. So it's important that you must monitor them uh, on the work that they'll be saying they are doing. Because for now, there's no clarity. Who does what? Where? How? And the resources that have been uh, 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 put in place, uh, in like the 1.6 billion, you know, I remember Honorable members in this portfolio committee were concerned on how was that 1.6 billion utilized by all relevant departments. And because it was then that we learned that there was no money that was sent to, was given to the Department of Women, but the money was still lying with those role playing departments. But in terms of accountability, uh, nobody has accounted uh, for for that uh, for that money, so we 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 will want to know as the portfolio committee on all role playing departments what is it that uh, 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 they've done with the money that was uh, 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 allocated for issues of gender based violence and femicide. And as uh, Thomas Santo Valley Lokujani Maikiak. So um, what, what we'll do, because we are to champion uh, uh, issues of gender-based violence, and we need to have all that information so that we know as uh, on behalf of parliament on what exactly is happening uh, on, on, on issues of gender-based violence. We hear uh, Honorable Sharif today that uh, she, she was sharing with us on the BMW, BMW's shelters and so on. But uh, if at least CGE was having a monitoring tool or somebody uh, or, or, or was assigned to do that work in terms of doing the monitoring and evaluation on the things that uh, 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 is happening on the ground, we were going to get the correct facts, accurate information. So, um, uh, uh, I'm happy that you, you, yes, you are saying it's going to be uh, part of your APP for 2021-2022 for financial year. Um, uh, I see your deputy chairperson's hand is up. Uh, honorable uh, 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 deputy chair and, and honorable Mkweba and Masigo, are your hands up or Ilesa Skat? Thank you, Chair. I'll be very quick because I know there's another presentation to be done. Quickly on the monitoring tool chair, I'm not sure what was discussed, apologies, I wasn't in the last meeting, but what I want to update the house was that the CEO and the management team 
in the last financial year uh, have finally agreed to report on the internal monitoring tool of efficacy of our report recommendations. CGE has done legal reports and has done research reports. We said as commissioners that we need to look at the recommendation implementation of our reports. We have found that we're doing too many reports and very few are being implemented with the recommendations. We're tired of doing reports that are not implemented with the recommendations. So we put in place what we call a monitoring tool that will look at both legal and research. What thus far has happened in the strategic planning, monitoring and evaluation oversight committee is the management has now reported up to the end of the financial year on two years going back on the reports for both legal and research. We have said we are not happy with two years. We have been doing research reports for the last five, six, seven years. We need to see, instead of doing new reports for the financial year, we want to assess the reports we have done and look at whether or not we want to review and put back those recommendations that were not implemented to the custodians. So you'll find that there are various and several reports across the different uh, sectors of public and private. So we then have now compiled the report. Um, the CEO has submitted, uh, I think she submitted the last pack. And I think if it has not come to the committee, it must be resubmitted. But the analysis of the report on the monitoring mm -hmm. of the of these uh, outcomes. So I think it's very critical for us to just appraise the uh, committee that it took CGE almost two years to come up with this. Masigo, unmute yourself, please. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so so there's, a, there's a two layered process where we have said, as CGE, we were not happy that we are not monitoring our own reports and the outcomes of the external stakeholders. And so we created this tool. It has been reported internally. We then said we took a resolution that it must be shared with parliament and that output should have been shared with parliament in the last pack. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I think the last meeting, there were other several issues maybe that were dealt with, but I think it's important to appraise the committee because we have seen this gap to say it's not good enough for to just issue reports. It's enough now. We must look at how our report recommendations are implemented. We must follow up on our own recommendations. We must see that those custodians are implementing those recommendations, Chair. So I think that I must just, I wanted to appraise the, the committee. I think that that may have been done in the last meeting. Unfortunately, I wasn't in that meeting, but it's important that I appraise the, the meeting of that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Deputy Chair. I think uh, you, you are in agreement with us because that's what we said even last week. But uh, we're saying uh, it's not helping us that you present old uh, uh, reports without telling us about uh, the updates, the developments, you know, because what is it's, it's important is that when you have um, findings on the research that you've done, you need then to share the report with the relevant a, a, a structure or, or the department. Uh, and then after that, you when you come to the portfolio committee and report, report on the uh, holistically, not that uh, you report on the work that you've done, but it doesn't help us to do research and then you, do, you, you don't share with the, uh, uh, the relevant uh, department or structure. And then when you come to present to us, it's like, we say the mover it's better when you share information with us, you share information and uh, after even actioning your, 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 your work that uh, you have done, because uh, it, it makes life easy for us. When you come and make a presentation, Tina will do oversight on the things that you have done already. And we see that there is no change, there is no progress. Uh, within those uh, uh, departments or structures. But thank you very much. They did uh, uh, elaborate on that one uh, 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 last week. Um, I don't know whether honorable members, uh, your question, all your questions have been answered. Chair, you want to say something? Uh, <clears throat> Chairperson, yes. I think there is one key question that we haven't responded to. Um, I think it was a question that was saying um, whether CGE has made any inputs into the bills. Um, I think into those four bills, I would recommend and, and request Commissioner Sepanya Mukhale 
um, to just quickly uh, respond to that uh, in terms of our response as the, as the institute. Thank you, Chair. Um, good morning, Chairperson and honorable members. Um, so far, the CGE has participated in several bills. The first one was the criminal matters bill. The second one was the sexual offenses bill and then the domestic violence bill. All those three were packaged together. So we participated in them as, 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 a, as a collective. We were even given the opportunity by the Justice Portfolio Committee to do a verbal presentation on, on, on them. The, the so, CGE also- uh, Mukale, uh, Commissioner yes. uh, Mukale, we, we want, I, I hear that your, your, your chairperson was saying on the four bills. Uh, in fact, we saw you on the under one of the uh, sexual offense and what, what you, were pres you, you were there at, as CGE, you presented something in, in the uh, Portfolio Committee on Justice. Ne? So yes, I yes. think on the, those ones you made, yes, I think those ones uh, you participated. We are talking about this one specifically because this one is more critical and important for us. Uh, okay, so we want to which one, one? The council, uh, GPV council, gender oh. Yes, we want that okay. one. Okay. Oh, okay, sorry about that, I, I, I didn't understand. That one, the chairperson of the commission is much familiar with the process. I will defer it back to her. I, she was the one who was attending meetings, so I don't know how far that process is. I know from a legal point of view in my subcommittee, we, we, did not, we may not have participated. I'm open to correction there, but I think the chairperson is more conversant with that. So yourself and, and Commissioner Day, we didn't look at the structures uh, the structure that they were proposing because it's it's your subcommittee with uh, commissioner day that deals with the legalities you see like what we were asking you on the co uh, uh, establishment of the council that we are disagreeing with them in relation to uh, a representation of yeah. ngos vis -a -vis government so yes. does it mean yourself and Commissioner Day, you did not look at those uh, uh, integrities? No, Che, we did not look at them. No. Yeah. No, no. Oh, oh. Uh, uh, yes. Maybe, yeah, well, it's important that maybe yes. yourself, your, your, your subcommittee uh, must look at everything that they are presenting. You heard most, we were talking about even they wanted to establish a trust and uh, yes. we were disagreeing with them, and we approved right by the national treasurer that no trust, no ways. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. So just look at all those things that we're raising as, as, as members also, mm -hmm. we're, we're raising other issues, and then sit down and, and, and scrutinize, go through what they are presenting, and then so that you can be able to even advise us as, as the committee on which one is right and which one must happen. Remember the other thing that they want to they, they want to do the uh, there's a, a, a gender a, 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 what do they call it there's a framework that uh, the country is using yes. that also uh, is making it difficult for 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 you to go and uh, 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 check what is happening in the private sector. You remember most, all, all those things. So what is important uh, 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 is that uh, you must also assist us. We need a bill that talks to issues of gender. That not a frame, framework is not uh, enough. We need policy, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Or chair of Magim or no, yeah, because I think, Chair, let me apologize um, on behalf of myself and Commissioner Sepanya Mohale. We completely misunderstood you. <laughs> we initially thought that you were referring to the three bills and uh, perhaps there was a, a, a fourth one that we need to respond to. So, Chair, really sorry yeah. from the both of us. In fact, on behalf of all of us, we, we apologize.
Uh, yes, now I understand. I think I, I fully understand what, what you're talking about. Che, we, we haven't looked at the structure, the proposed structure as CGE, but more so as the legal uh, committee of CGE, which is a, a led and chaired by Commissioner Sepanya Mukhali, where Commissioner D is also participating. The two commissioners, Commissioner Sepanya Mukhali and Commissioner D, are the ones that have the legal background. So we always depend on them in terms of looking at documents and issues in a legal way, and, and they can put in even a legal language into documents. So, Che, in terms of what the department has proposed in terms of a structure moving forward, this is a, one of the documents that we will request uh, that we yeah. uh, be finished with that report. And then in our legal committee, Che, led by Commissioner Spanya Mukali, this is something that we will actually discuss in detail and then advise accordingly. I think that's the first thing. Che. Yeah. So what I'm yeah. hearing it's is a very, bill. very, very it's a bill, a, a chairperson, it's a bill to establish a national council national for gender-based violence and feminism. Yes. No, I've, yeah. I've heard about it, Che. No, I I, I agree okay. with you. We will we will do the right thing. Thanks, Che. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Chepesin. Uh Mukhaling Bueni Lugut Yazin so can do the thing here, Kola. I'm sorry, Che. We misunderstood. Sorry, Che. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I think uh, all your questions, honorable members, are covered, ne? Honorable Masiko, can you take over? Uh, the next presentation uh, is uh, the second presentation. A uh, 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 person can 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 the CEO uh, uh, come in again? Masiko, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. We turn over to the CEO to All present. Right. Uh, <laughs> okay, I was thinking about that thing I was talking about, but it's fine. Maybe it's not important. Is it your question that has not been answered, Mam Sonti? Next. Okay, can you kindly remind uh, the CGE so that they can answer your question that has not been answered or attended to? It was, it was about the CPF who was uh, oh. assisting in the police stations. Even last week, I asked that question. Okay. Uh, okay, can you attend to the question that Honorable Mamsundi had asked uh, around uh, surrounding the CPF? Um, Honorable Masiko, you know what I want to suggest on that one? Mm. Uh, I want to suggest that Kashifa uh, must send a question to uh, the Department of Police and the Portfolio Committee on, on, on Police. We need to get an answer uh, because maybe it will be difficult for them to respond uh, accurately uh, on, on that one. But that question, it's, it's, it's relevant. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. I think, Mam Sonti, the response that the chairperson has, has um, given will, will satisfy us all in terms of uh, the CPF uh, 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 being housed under the Department of uh, Police. And I think if we would send a written question to them, we would be able to get a, a far better response in relation to the question yeah. that you asked. Okay, thank you, Chief Whip. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Ma'am. So ma we'll hand over to the commission to get the report, um, the second report over to you, CEO.
<clears throat> Thank you, Honorable Chief Whip. Um, as indicated, uh, can I check if the report, the presentation is projecting? Yes, it's projecting, CEO. Thanks, Honorable Whip. Um, the, 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 the second report we're presenting, and as I speak, I'm trying to uh, put it on slide mode. Uh, it's coming on slowly. Um, on the, we're reporting now on the, uh, the state of shelter investigation that we conducted as the commission. Uh, again, uh, Honorable uh, Chair now and uh, Honorable Members, I will try to run quick by skipping introductory slides that have um, uh, information that uh, the, the Portfolio Committee is, is aware of. Um, in terms of the background and purpose of this study, um, the Commission undertook a systematic investigation into the state of shelters in South Africa. And this was initiated, it came about uh, because of a complaint received, um, uh, which uh, indicated the inadequate and misaligned funding of shelters across the country. Uh, as a commission, we observed that there were deep-rooted systemic challenges that needed to be addressed at the highest level of institutions that are expected to offer services to survivors of violence. Uh, and, and as such, an investigative report of 2018-19 recommended the following. Um, there was a call uh, 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 to... We, we recommended... Hello? Yes, I'm raising my hand. I see, I see the hand of Honorable Masondo. Yes, uh, Honorable Mamtutu. Hey, 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 good morning, uh, Honorable Members. Good morning, uh, Chair. Uh, I, I'm just, I just want to get the clarity here before we continue with this report. Is the report that was reported last week, because I see my documents are the same, or maybe there are some amendments, or maybe the responses from last week meeting. Thanks, Chair. May I respond, Chair? Yes, yes, you may respond, CEO. Yes. Um, Honorable Masondo, last week we presented the assessment of uh, police stations in, uh, the, the, in terms of the services they provide to uh, gender-based violence or uh, um, violence against women and children uh, in six police stations. And initially we needed to, uh, to uh, do this assessment in 12 police stations. So that was specifically a separate report to this one. This one is on the state of shelters, shelters that are, are uh, intended to be havens for uh, abused women and children in the country. Uh, a complaint came to the CGE that triggered uh, a, a, an investigation and uh, the slide I'm projecting now um, is, 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 is high, it's, it's presenting the, the recommendation of that investigation. So how this work was carried forward. Uh, I'm not sure, Chair, if that is clarified, if I should continue or perhaps. Yeah, you may continue, or oh, you've clarified it. I think what yes, I guess the conclusion, ma'am, to do is that in terms of the notices uh, for the meetings, we did have the this uh, presentation in the notices, but it was not uh, presented at the end of the day. That's why we are um, receiving it today. But we also understand that the portfolio committee for um, the portfolio committee on social development, yes has recently engaged CGE on this very same report. So maybe you might just find that you, you, you've seen it somewhere, but as a portfolio committee, we've not uh, received this report. We had also only received it on the notices, but it was not presented last week. So I'll request, um, if that is okay with you, Mam to do, I'll request the CEO to continue. Yes, Chair, I, I just want to say something, yes. Uh, now I, yes. I, I'm clarified. 
but I just want to bring to your attention that then okay, last week I had questions here and then the CTE responded even those that you has not presented. Thank you, Chair. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, you may continue, CEO. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Honorable Masondo. Um, so the, 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 the first recommendation from the previous investigative uh, report was to call a public hearing uh, uh, in the previous financial year on this matter of shelters. And participating in those hearings, we, 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 we invited heads, the heads of the nine provincial uh, uh, departments of social development, the, the national uh, 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 director general, general of the Department of Social Development and the DG of the National Department of Human Settlement. Uh, and obviously in the hearings, we, we have um, set questions relevant to the issue at hand, which we request uh, the, the, the stakeholders uh, to account on as per the findings of the investigative hearing. So uh, uh, as such, we as the commission held this hearing from the 2nd to the 6th of December, 2019, and the following institutions were part of this hearing. So in addition to, 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 to the DGs and the provincial heads uh, that are alluded to uh, previously, we also had uh, the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure and, and Honorable uh, uh, Chair and members will note that these are departments that are relevant to the situation of, uh, of shelters in the country, including the, the, the police, the Department of Health, the Department of Human Settlement, uh, the Department of Safety in Gauteng, uh, National Treasury, the Department of Labor, and the Department of Women, Youth, and Persons with D Disabilities, and lastly are the stakeholders that I have already uh, mentioned uh, uh, in the previous slide. So the, the, the key findings, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, were that the provinces apply inconsistent budget allocation, administration, and minimum standards requirements for shelters. Uh, there was no clear criteria used to determine if a shelter is adequately resourced, especially uh, shelters that uh, are run by uh, NGOs. Uh, again, so another weakness was uh, the existence of sexual harassing, uh, harassment policies, which were not necessarily part of the set policies needed uh, uh, for funding. And this is, is key as survivors are often vulnerable uh, uh, to sexual harassment and, and therefore susceptible. Uh, and, and requiring protection in this regard. Another finding that was uh, rather concerning, so to speak, is that male children over 10 years were often neglected in shelters, in, in some shelters, and they were not accommodated. While this, in our assessment, was contravening the Children's Act that affords children of, of both sexes or children of all uh, uh, backgrounds to be able to be protected and provided services in the country. So the, 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 the provision of shelter services do not necessarily preclude these uh, children, although it looks like somewhere along the way. And again, these are the kind of findings where they may be explained if further studies are conducted in terms of why these children were not uh, accommodated uh, in the shelters. Uh, another uh, concerning area uh, in our key finding is that there was a lack of minimum standards providing for the needs of persons with disabilities and the LGBTIQA plus community um, uh, as accredited digital skills development prog programs to survivors of shelters. And again, if there are no standards or, or compelling guidelines to, to accommodate uh, uh, 
uh, previously and currently disadvantaged sections of, 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 of society. Uh, the, uh, the discretion is left uh, on us as individuals to apply our own prejudices in terms of how uh, we, we accommodate people who don't conform to, to our beliefs of how people should be. Um, in provinces such as Limpombo and Northwest, uh, they had only two shelters, uh, which was viewed by our, our research as inadequate. Um, it was recommended, therefore, that the National uh, Department of Social Development, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, if I can highlight here that this is actually the shortest uh, uh, presentation, uh, but the reports uh, for all the presentation we're making, full reports have been submitted uh, to, to, to the Portfolio Committee. Hence, this is um, a, a, a very short presentation in that regard. So uh, the first recommendation we made based on uh, the, the brief uh, uh, findings that I have presented were that the, the National Social De uh, Department of Social De Development must develop effective and efficient mechanism to accurately record funding allocation to shelters it, uh, because it was observed that the challenges of the provincial offices of the DSD ad, that administer NPO funding has been a longstanding concern. Uh, apparently, this is a historical thing, so to speak, as this study found. Um, and, and, and administrative practices uh, vary significantly between provinces. And this is particularly an area of concern because without guidelines, as I say, uh, if we as public servants are, are given the leeway to make our own decisions in terms of who get the funding, how much funding, who do we provide services to, this uh, basically reverse our gains in terms of the promotion of basic human rights, rights to, you know, basic services, so to speak, for all citizens of these countries or, or for, for all people who dwell in this country for that matter. Uh, the National Department of Health as our second uh, recommendation, uh, sorry, the National uh, Department of Social Development uh, must develop the national policy and guidelines to adequately and uniformly resource shelters, which is emphasizing what I was just alluding to a minute ago. Um, and it is accepted that financing of all services in accordance with their true cost may not be immediately possible, especially at this stage with the fiscal status of our country. But in the interim, all post uh, subsidies for equivalent positions uh, must be standardized because the, the, the fiscal status of the country does not justify an equal a, 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 um, allocation of resources uh, to services and those who are providing uh, the service. Um, so the, the third uh, um, recommendation was that the Department, again, of Social Development must develop a national policy providing for minimum wage to, to, to house uh, uh, mothers. Uh, and sub subsidies to, towards social and, and social auxiliary workers employed by N NGOs or NPOs vary between 29% and 80% of entry level salaries. And as honorable chair and honorable members can note, the, the, the difference is, is very, very unacceptable if one were to, to just uh, express an opinion. Uh, the gap between uh, these, uh, the social department and NGOs NPO run uh, uh, um, shelters must be closed. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the vast difference really do need to be uh, minimized because there's no justification for this. Um, and especially because in a report of 2016, the national minimum wage panel recognized that non-profit social welfare sector faced a very particular set of challenges in, in finding its staff uh, and activities. And obviously this is attributed to this kind of uh, wages that are received by the sector. Um, and and uh, another, in addition to that recommendation is that an expert panel be established to find means to address uh, this low wage, which to me seems to be very urgent uh, because it, it, 
it really doesn't speak to our uh, endeavors as a new democracy that is striving for equality. Um, the fourth or, uh, recommendation is the costing exercise be undertaken by the National Department of Social Development and Treasury to ensure that no subsidy is below the minimum wage. And, and this again is us recommending things that fall within the law uh, because uh, uh, the, the NEDLEP does not allow for representation of the NPO social welfare. The NEDLEP being the, the National uh, Economic Development uh, Labor Council. So if it doesn't allow this, it makes it difficult for this sector to even negotiate uh, uh, for a minimum wage. Um, so this is crucial that uh, space is even allowed for, for this sector to negotiate because at this stage, uh, again, it, it can even be assumed that the sector is marginalized because it doesn't have a voice in the system. Um, the fifth recommendation, uh, uh, honorable members and chair, is that shelters need to support what most women's needs in their entirety. Uh, for instance, issues like toiletry, food, clothing, travel to health and legal centers, because when they go to these shelters, obviously their lives continue. They, they don't stop, but the likelihood is that they may not have means to get these basic uh, uh, products that are required for everyday life. Um, uh, the F, our sixth recommendation is that although as a commission we observe that there is a draft training and development framework by the DSD that will be ready after consultation with the relevant stakeholders, it is recommended that all post subsidies for equivalent positions uh, uh, must in the interim be standardized across provinces, because that seems to be a, a quick win that can be, uh, despite the economy, uh, with what is existing now, there's no need to continue uh, uh, um, uh, paying unequal wages and allocating unequal budgets uh, for, 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 for shelters. Um, the next uh, recommendation, honorable chair and members, is that uh, shelters must provide accommodation for persons with all types of disabilities, including but not limited to people who have visual or, or, or hearing uh, impairments uh, uh, in this regard. And secondly, as highlighted uh, with, uh, with the finding accommodations of all sections of society, uh, as per our constitution that uh, everyone in this country uh, has a right to basic services regarding, regardless of their background and our constitution constitution is known to be vast uh, on the grounds of, of, of non-discrimination, about 16 or 17, uh, and LGBTIQA plus uh, communities are part of our society, therefore they, they, we shouldn't be discriminating them on the basis of their identities. And this is one of the strong recommendations that we put forward because it, it infringes directly on uh, our uh, people's basic uh, human rights. Uh, shelter, uh, sh the shelter provision must be in accordance with the population and, and be offered in municipalities as part of the Department of Health plan. And this is important to, to perhaps uh, uh, elaborate because I initially talked about um, uh, allocating resources equally. And the, I think the key word is not equally, is following equity. Uh, because now you have to look at the proportions of uh, how the po provinces are populated, what are the levels of gender-based violence, what are the needs in terms of shelters, because you, we can't just build shelters randomly. We need, we need to look at needs. So th this, this, this analysis uh, 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 need to follow uh, existing plans. Uh, so information is basically already uh, available around uh, the, the, the uh, you know, uh, the, the population proportions uh, in, in, in provinces. And it's a question of looking at the need in terms of this issue at hand. Also, uh, the, the Department of Social Development must host national and provincial consultative processes to implement and finalize 
all this recommendation as provided by the Commission for Gender Equality. In conclusion, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, the Commission sought to uh, progress reports from all entities that appeared in the hearing, including the National Department of Social De Development on the implementation of the recommendation in 2019. That was, this was, uh, the response was received last year and progress reports on the compliance to the finalization will be, uh, it's part of our quarter four uh, reports that we will present. Uh, honorable chair and honorable members, if you may allow me to just add a little, um, a comment reminded by this last uh, 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 statement here that uh, 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 many of uh, in quarter four we are uh, finalizing a, a couple of reports that will respond to some of the comments that have been made in relation to the reports being old that we presented uh, and, and, and perhaps indicating that we presented the reports that were requested, but there are follow-up reports on some of these studies, some of which are, are due this year. And as we move forward, one of the discussions we've been having internally was we need to create a thread of the researches that and investigations that we are making so that you see uh, wherever you present, you, you have that whole thread that says, we, we have moved from here all the way to here. Why today we're presenting a 2015 report, for instance, maybe the, 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 the context of that report required follow up after a couple of years and so forth. So that context, uh, I think, is required so that we also need to clarify to the portfolio committee why some reports are presented in the way uh, that I have been presented. Uh, and for us, it's about responding to the committee adequately. Thank you, honorable members and chairperson and commissioners. Thank you very much. Uh, CEO, and uh, I think we will allow honorable members to, 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 to make contributions. Uh, but before that, um, CEO, I see that in your concluding remarks you have made uh, is, is that you are, if we can go to the last slide, if you, you have indicated that you are awaiting uh, the responses from the department, especially the Department of Social Development, of which yes. the assumption is that the assumption is that you have fully engaged the Department of Social Development on this report. Is it yes. the correct assumption? As well as the, the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. Um, Honorable Chair, at this stage, um, the, the, the hearings were held with that list of stakeholders and the recommendations. Uh, yes, yes, CEO. Sorry. Um, the recommendations uh, were the, the, according to this report, uh, where the follow up was done mainly with the department, the National Department of Social Development. But I think when we present this, this report, we will have a good detail of exactly how many, was it just the a national department or maybe it coordinated provincial activities, that detail as we submit the report at the end of this quarter, we should be able to, to provide a, a clear details in that regard, Honorable Chair. Okay, um, thank you, CEO. The follow-up is that uh, the Department of Social Development has an intersectoral policy on sheltering services that was mm. developed by the Department of Social Development. So one would like to know, has, uh, that has the CGE made any inputs on this policy? And also, uh, in terms of engaging other stakeholders, uh, you know that you do have your public, your private, and, uh, as well as your NPO sector. Uh, there is the existence of an NGO um, that is the National Shelter Movement of South Africa, which is an NGO and uh, dealing with the state of shelters in South Africa. So one would like to know if uh, CGE has engaged this uh, uh, movement, uh, the National Shelter Movement of South Africa. 
on the findings and the recommendations of this report. Uh, Honorable members, I would also then recognize uh, hands if you are having any questions or um, input or, or comments on, on the report that has been presented uh, in this platform. I see the hand of Honorable Mamshengwa. Honorable Mkweba. Okay, we are having two hands. Um, Honorable Mam Shengwa, you are recognized. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you to the CEO for the comprehensive report. Thank you. Mine, I don't know whether I say a question or a, a comment, but I was there in the commenting of the shelters as we are, you know, we are department of women, youth and people with disability. I am on a specific disability now. Then my question is that, does the provinces have any plan for the implementation of a proper shelter or conducive shelter for all type of person with disability? In the policy you are talking about, it is good but is there any tool for monitoring what is happening there? Because in some schools, they are a difficult to enter the classes because of the steps. Is there any tool to monitor? Because if we come up, we close this department, DSD, Department of Education, as well as health together, you, you can come up with a clear policy and a clear understanding what is happening in the ground because in some schools, they are a difficult to enter in the classrooms. That, that's why I'm talking about the monitoring of the monitoring tools. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ma'am Sengwa. Uh, Honorable Mkweba. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Whip. And um, let me also welcome the, the presentation as led by the CEO. In fact, Chair, I don't have questions, but um, I wish to propose that uh, we, 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 in fact, we, we, we note the issues as presented, especially that um, some shelters around the country, they are adequately resourced and uh, obvious led by the NGOs and also the 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 the, the shelters are not friendly let's note that and uh, also support the presentation by this by the CGE on the shelters and with the recommendations but also wish that um, a portfolio committee can then take an oversight visit 
Aló. Yes, honorable Punkweba, your, your perfect average is not so good, but uh, we are picking up a few of your comments. If you may just proceed and try to find Chair. a... Yes, honorable Punkweba. Chair. Yes, honorable Punkweba. Chair. We can hear you. Hello, Chair. Yes, we can hear you. You know what? Sorry, oh, my problem is that uh, I'm at the village, and then, but however, I'm saying that I'm saying to her quickly let RGE with its uh, challenges, especially where some special those led by the NGOs and also the disability friendly. Uh, in the near future, let's have the shelter so that we must be able to to, to get issues as presented by the the, the CGE. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Mkweba. CEO, I'm sure that you've captured the questions by Honorable Sengwa and as well as Honorable Mkweba. But I think before you answer, one would also like to get insight uh, in, in relation to the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure's presentation to the Portfolio Committee on um, DPWI, where they had noted that they had identified 84 properties uh, uh, for shelters and 57 of them had been visited. And of those properties, you had six in the Western Cape as well as six in Gauteng and others, you know, spread across the country. So in relation to those 84 sites or shelters that had been identified by the Depart Department of Public Work Works and Infrastructure, one would like to know as to uh, any um, a comments from 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 CGE in relation to those identified sites by the sites by the Department of Public Works. Uh, over to you, CEO, to respond to the questions that have been asked by the honourable members. Uh, honourable members, I hope I'm not leaving anyone out because I'm not seeing any hands that wish to comment uh, or ask questions. We only had those two, CEO. Thank you, Honorable Whip. Um, let me start with the last question uh, around the report of the DPW, uh, because this strikes me as something that should actually show in our uh, in the follow-up report that we say we will uh, report on uh, in quarter four. And this is where now uh, our findings will reveal what whether this you know can be verified can be verified or not, and hopefully we will get uh, positive results uh, in this regard, because I don't want to uh, 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 jump the gun, so to speak, and, 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 and present uh, inaccurate information that is being uh, finalized at this stage. Um, the, the, the issue of the, if I got the question right in terms of our recommendations around NGOs, the accessibility of shelters for persons with disabilities, LGBTI and the underfunding of shelters run by NGOs. I think the recommendations are there. And the, 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 the good thing about our work is that it, it never ends until we, we, we follow up the recommendations as far as our mandate allows us. And these are of obviously, as I said in the presentation, these are key issues that we would see our recommendation coming to fruition. So if, if this coming report, and I want to believe it must shed, it will shed some light in terms of between the time we conducted this research, the hearings, and this follow-up, this upcoming follow-up, how far have our recommendations uh, being implemented and what is remaining and what are the steps we take in that regard? Hence, honorable chair, I, 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 hence I'm saying I don't want to jump the gun. Come end of March when we report, we report something contrary to what I would have uh, 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 speculated, uh, so to speak. Um, the 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 issue of whether provinces. Uh, have plans to uh, to 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 to. Uh, it relates back to the issue of accommodation, uh, and honourable uh, chair and honourable members, 
I'm, I'm responding in as far as I know, and I know uh, 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 the, the chair and commissioners will, will plug in the holes, uh, so to speak, in this regard. Uh, these, again, uh, in terms of their plans, we have made that recommendation. So there are recommendations made at national level, and then uh, and, and naturally the, the, nation, uh, the national department needs to facilitate uh, 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 these processes, but we still have to know if uh, uh, that has happened. When when this report comes, will it show that the plans we recommended are in place? Are they standardized? Uh, are they working towards uh, um, standardizing the processes of, 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 of funding and servicing shelters as recommended by our study? Uh, in terms of the involvement of the national um, shelter uh, movement of South Africa. Uh, in reading the report, I would say, yes, they were involved. Um, and and the, the issue of the intersectoral uh, uh, um, structure of the National Department of Social Development, I will defer that to the chair and commissioners uh, because they may have uh, better information in terms of the involvement, whereas I, I have the information from the report. Um, and that includes also the, 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 the national shelter uh, movement of South Africa because my, my, my response is brief and there may be uh, more uh, nuanced details in that regard. Honorable Chair, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, uh, CEO. Um, I'll hand over to you, Chair, to answer to the questions that have not been picked up by the CEO. Um, <clears throat> Chairperson, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Um, I think CEO is quite right to say that the report that we are currently finalizing will have the details of um, the public works uh, um, as updates in terms of what has happened. Um, um, I'm not sure whether, am, am, I, am I audible, uh, Chair? You are clearly audible. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. You're quite right. The, the department uh, identified a total of 84 properties and um, 57 of those were properties that were visited in terms of looking at whether they can be refurbished. Uh, Chair, uh, the, 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 what has happened was that um, early last year, um, I think between February and March, uh, there were um, about, I think in the, West, in the Western Cape, there were six uh, that were identified. Uh, and um, out of those six, three were refurbished as early as 2020, February, March. And, um, and, I, and, I, and I hope that uh, those are, are fully functional at the moment. Um, and I, I remember that um, uh, Minister uh, Patricia Deline was the one who actually uh, launched um, those structures in the Western Cape that have been refurbished uh, to become uh, shelters for, for women um, who are survivors of gender-based violence. And uh, we, we also asked about the location chair in terms of whether they are located in the big cities. And we were informed that um, those structures were clearly uh, identified to actually be brought closer to communities and especially in the Western Cape communities and, 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 and places where gender-based violence was quite rife. The next move uh, was in the Eastern Cape, uh, Jefferson, where I think there was quite a lot of identification of houses, of people's homes, which were in ordinarily would be, you know, your, you know, you know if you have a very big home with a lot of rondavals. So those rondavals would be identified and changed into a comfortable two bed kind of a, a shelter, very small, but right in the community so that people don't have to travel long distances uh, running away from a, a situation and, and travel from 
a one a, a end of the Eastern Cape, like Umzimkulu, traveling to, um, you know, to East London, for an example, where the shelter was. So I think that was the criteria that was also followed up in terms of putting the structure in the Eastern Cape. In Gauteng, Chair, there was also six um, buildings or, yes, buildings that were also identified uh, to, um, to be um, looked at in terms of changing those buildings into, into shelters. I think um, the report will come with details of that information chain in terms of where the process is at the moment. With regards to the National Shelter Movement, uh, Chairperson, thank you very much for that question because the National Shelter Movement from the word go, um, they were part and parcel of our uh, investigation because when we started doing this investigation on the state of shelters, we then roped in the department, the National Shelter Movement, which is an, a big NGO that is actually looking at the kind of shelters that women would ordinarily um, you know, run into. So they were part of our investigation chair. And I remember that in the 2019 um, um, uh, hearings, investigative hearings, National Shelter Movement was always invited to actually sit in with us as Commission for Gender Equality and be able to identify and note issues that we were raising when we were engaging the stakeholders that we managed to um, invite for those investigative hearings. And we were also getting advices in terms of the model, the funding, what is relevant, um, in what is supposed to be the ideal infrastructure for a shelter. Uh, so we were getting all those advices from the National uh, Shelter Movement Chair. So they are pretty much engaged from the word go up until the end of our investigation, including the investigative hearing. Um, Chair, let me pause here and allow other uh, uh, commissioners to actually respond uh, to questions raised. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair, for the responses. I will now recognize any <laughs> that wish to make further contributions. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, I just wanted to make an input. We found that the um, link between the shelters and the economic cluster, i.e. women who are financially dependent on their partners go back, particularly because of the dependence factor. So we've found that the shelter report doesn't only deal with the infrastructure, but the economic aspect. So we have said that uh, the empowerment of women, particularly those who are in shelters, needs to be strengthened and that we must find expression of the empowerment training and support finance for those women who are in those shelters so that they can leave, uh, if they choose to leave these uh, domestic violence um, relationships because of uh, dependence they go back. So we have said that at least the economic cluster needs to look at working closely with social development because the two don't speak to each other. The seaters are not there. You're not finding them on the ground actually assisting in the long run. So that is a big problem which causes them to simply go back. So it's a big cycle that is not prevented and stopped primarily because of the economic dependence. So that's an aspect that has just been um, not focused on. <clears throat> Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, Deputy Chair. Are there any other commissioners that wish to make further contributions? Yes, Chief, with Commissioner Mazibugo. Yes, Commissioner Mazibugo, you may go ahead. Yes, I would like to make a contributions to what the issue of having a shelters for persons with disabilities. I, I think as persons with disabilities, we think we need inclusion where we find that we don't want to be left alone to our own as persons with disabilities. But as CGE, we've spoken to TSD to say in the shelters, one, it is very important to have a sign language interpreter in each and every uh, shelter, or even if that person is not there every day, but that person must be given to say, when a person with a hearing impairment is there, somebody must come in to come in, have sign language interpretation. And then we find that most of the shelters have got ramps, but it doesn't end there with the ramps. Even in the shelters, we need rooms 
where we have toilets for persons with disabilities on wheelchairs and we need to have steps. When you go up the steps, there must be indication of highlighting to persons who have got low vision to mark the yellow steps to say there's a step after step. And then the main thing is that staff in the shelters should employ persons with disabilities themselves so that they can be working with other disabled people. And then to stress on the point that Deputy uh, Chair has just spoken about, we suggested to say in the skills audit or where people stay, stay for, a, for six months in a shelter, the shelters must have accredited skills uh, uh, services where a person can go out out of this uh, center or the shelter being equipped to go and fend them for themselves. So it is important that we're not looking for shelters of persons with disabilities. No, we want to be included because disability cuts across. So we are working towards looking at the white doors and the purple doors to be inclusive of persons with disabilities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Mazibugo. Are we having any other commissioners? Okay. There being no other hands or further commissioners that wish to make contributions, I think we have exhausted uh, all the questions or answered all the questions that uh, honorable members had in relation to this report. And uh, we have thus come to the end of the meeting in relation to the item on the reports from CGEs. Chairperson and your team, I would like to, and your team of commissioners, I would like to thank you very much, including the CEO, for making the time to come to this portfolio committee meeting and uh, deliver the presentations that you have delivered. Thank you very much. You may um, excuse yourselves from the meetings, uh, from this meeting. Thank you very much, Chief. We Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Chairperson. I very think much. it's an absolute pleasure to actually come and uh, present our work uh, before the Portfolio Committee and the community at large. Thanks for this opportunity, Chair. Thanks to Thank all. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank Thank Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, honorable members, we have two other items uh, on our agenda, but I see that we don't have enough time to deal with those items, especially because we do have a pressing meeting, some of us at one o'clock. Uh, the item that is uh, on the agenda, which is item number two, is consideration and adoption of minutes. The third, agenda item is consideration and adoption of committee's oversight visit to Omtualome. Looking at those two items, I don't think we will cover them in the time that we're having, which is close to uh, 15 minutes. And I would request with the approval of the uh, uh, members that we defer these two items to the next meeting. Second, teacher. Mm -hmm. Now, thank you. Second, okay. Thank you, members. I will therefore request that uh, we bring this meeting to a close by thanking you for your participation, your contributions that you have made uh, towards the reports that we have received. And uh, yeah, have a good afternoon. The meeting is officially closed. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye, Chair. Currently, I'm starting to call philosophy. Thank you. Goodbye. I'm a swing sweeper at ENC. Alert video now started.